Hi. In this video, I'm going to show you how Camelot version 1 will import a stair stringer 12 inch C channel from an NC1 file. So before we go too far, let's talk about the NC1 file format. There are quite a few different file formats out there to represent 3D parts. Two of them we specifically handle in Camelot. These are the two most common ones. One of them is called a step file and the other is called an NC1 file. Now a step file is a file that represents a structure of a 3D part. It gives you all the elements and everything to make that part. What it doesn't include, however, is engravings, markings, painting, mark, you know, um, coatings, things like that. So, for instance, if I was to bring in a stringer, let's go ahead and import a step file. I'll bring in this stringer right here. We're not going to detect features. What you see is this is the stringer. So we brought it in as a step file. However, no markings, no engraving because a step file cannot show an engraved mark because it's not an actual 3D part. It's just nothing more than a, a discoloration on your part. It's a marking. So it won't show it. Now, NC1 file format solves that problem, but they go at it a different way. The NC1 file format was created to feed post processors at different kinds of CNC machines. So for instance, you may have a drilling machine that will be able to read that NC1 file, pull out only the drilling information, post process it and drill your part. Same thing if you had a cutting machine like the XR12 out there, um, you would say, okay, read that, that file and process it. That works good because an NC1 file format is a description of how to make the part, not necessarily the elements of the part itself. So for instance, in this manual right here, which you can download off the internet, this is the NC1 file format right here. I think it's 23 pages long. Um, you could download that. Now, it does let you do the engraving and you'll see that here in a minute. So, however, what it doesn't do, and I've been able to not, I have been unable to find it in that manual, is to represent a rail that has been bent, has run through a tube bender and you've got a bend in it. I cannot find it to save my life. I've talked to other people that are pretty good with Tecla and they didn't know how to do it either. So I'm kind of leaning towards that it, it maybe it doesn't do it, which surprises me because it's such a common feature. Um, so if you know a little bit more about it, because I'm telling you right now, it isn't in this, this manual that I could understand. All right, that's where the step files come in. So if I was to come over here and I want to import a step file, let's go over to um, where I keep some of this stuff at here. All right, go customer test pieces. And we're looking for a simple roll bar, something with a bend in it. Um, here you go, right here. Okay. No, I don't want to detect features. This is a simple rail. Now, a step file does represent the bends because as I mentioned earlier, it's the actual elements of how to build that 3D part. So it does have the bends. What it doesn't have, of course, is all of your markings. So if you are doing a stringer, you're not gonna get any of these marks whatsoever. And it turns out that the most time consuming job of doing stairs is laying out stringers of where all these brackets have to be positioned. You want them all nice and straight with each other. And a lot of times you run into problems. You might have a slight bend in your, your C channel that you've got, but you still want everything kind of straight, right? So that the steps are in line. So anyway, that's the difference. Step file, a 3D step file is an actual 3D part, the elements. NC1 file is a description of how to build that part. That's why it has engravings because it can describe to you where to place the engravings on the part. Okay, we got that out of the way. Now let's talk about the three ways you can process uh, items in the XR rotary cutter because it's very, very important. In a previous video, I had gone ahead 
and talked about the step files, the NC1 files, and also the three different way to process the work pieces. So if you want to go find this file right here on YouTube and watch it, it'll give you a good overview of what's going on because this video is just one video in a series of videos of how to do structural parts in the XR. In this video, we are doing the Camelot, the CAD side of it, we're not cutting. We're gonna be cutting and marking in the next video. Um, so let's go ahead, um, find that right there, that'll help you out. Now, the three different ways of actually handling the, in the machine, like I talked about in that previous video, is to lay it flat, spin it in a ring if you were doing a long part or if you're doing a bunch of short parts you could use the stabilizer right there and that'll allow you to do that now a stabilizer is this right here so it's going to ride along with the gantry if i zip here and that's if you're doing parts like that that part there is a piece of 12 by 12 inch square tube but it's only about uh, 10 inches long or so this way so it's an ideal part for a stabilizer because with the stabilizers you do not want this part coming too far out because the leverage becomes so great that the rollers can't handle the weight so that's why you would maybe want to use a stabilizer you're doing short little parts that's where a stabilizer shines now and we're talking channel here. If you're doing long parts, like say two by three box tubing or four by four, stabilizers work pretty well for that too because you could use the automatic uh, material support to support the end once it's stuck out the stabilizer far enough. However, for doing stair structurals, uh, it's, it's not a good way of doing it. Uh, now, it is a beautiful way of doing it for your angle iron, which I'll be doing a video here in a few days of using a stabilizer to do the three inch angle, how to process it in Camelot, etc. It works great because the parts are only like 12 inches long, 10 inches long. So you want to just go, 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 go and make the whole part. When it comes to doing the stringer itself, the preferred method is the flat method. You could just go up with your forklift, load it flat, go to town, and that will also let you do um, markings. So for instance, this is what we're interested in right here. We want to cut the ends flat. We're not going to get the, the, the flanges because when I talk to my customers who have our machines are doing this kind of work, they've all figured out and told me they don't want to rotate this part. They want to lay it flat very accurately cut the ends right here and place all the marks all the drilled holes everything on that face because that's what they care about and then they're going to come back with a cutoff wheel and cut the flanges themselves they told me that it's less than 30 seconds per flange so for an average stringer you've got what two minutes you're going to cut them off yet you'll spend way 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 more time than that just out there marking the piece so the game plan in the XR with the um, uh, laying it flat is you load up the first one, cut it, start marking it. When it's done, you unload it with your forklift, load up your second stringer, hit the go button, let it start doing that time consuming marking and drawing and everything while you just go over there and cut the flanges off. That is by far the easiest way currently to handle a stringer in an XR uh, six or 12 machine. Okay, let's go ahead now and start off with the idea that we're going to bring in the NC1 file format and tool it up to go the flat method. Okay, I've miniaturized myself to the upper corner so we can see the screen better. Let's go ahead and select file import dstv now dstv is the actual name for an nc1 file but most people just refer to them as nc1s notice the word experimental right there that's because we have not implemented all of the shapes that an nc1 file format can contain um, for instance we haven't done round tubes yet it's incredibly easy to do we could do it in less than a day we haven't done it because we are concentrating on stairs, which is our angle iron and our C channel. Later, we'll bring out the round tube and I beams and stuff like that. But right now, we're just concentrating on the stair industry part of it. So that's 
why the word experimental is there. Anyway, let's just go ahead and click on that. And we are going to import our NC file. This file was sent to me by one of my customers who does stairs and all. Anyway, that's your NC1 uh, part right there. The next step is we have to go ahead and make a job for this part right here. So I will make job for all items. There's only one on the screen, so I could pick that. Now, what you see down here is this progress bar is basically Camelot version 1 wasting our time. Uh, Camelot version 1, this one here, was written as a CAM program, Computer Aided Manufacturing, C-A-M. Uh, CAD program, C-A-D, Computer Aided Design, is a different, um, you, you look at things differently. Since Camelot was written as a CAM program, we started adding design features to it later, but it wasn't originally designed as a design software. So what's happening is right now Camelot is looking for all these features that we've added over the last four years, wedge cuts, bends in a tube, deductions, uh, everything from drilled holes to non-drilled holes. It's looking for everything. Camelot 2 will eliminate that step right there. So that'll save you a minute, a minute and a half per deal. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save this job as S2, because that's the name of the part. And there we go. Now look, we do have the engravings. There's all your marks right there that we so desperately want out of the NC1 file. All right, we've also got layers over here. So this is the start layer, and that's going to be the end furthest from the chuck. Then we have the, all the holes. Then we have the end cut, and then we have the markers themselves, the engraved part. I don't want to use the start cut because if you noticed, it's what they call a wire, and a wire is an enclosed profile. We want to deal with edges. So I am going to delete this layer here. I right click on it, hit delete. I'm getting rid of that layer. I'm also going to get rid of the whole layer. I'll show you why here in a second. Let me get rid of the end layer first for the same reason I got rid of the start layer. Now the whole layer, this particular NC1 file format had all the holes marked inside the web, not on the outside. So this is what I was mentioning earlier that we're going to have to change. Camelot version 2, you will not have to do this step, so that'll save you about another 30 seconds. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer entirely. Um, I don't want any whole layers on there. So now we have pretty much, with the exception of engraving, we have this raw part right here, and we have to start adding contours. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add a contour by selecting it up here under contours. There you go. Now, there's three ways to do it. You could select a face. So if I click face and I select on a face, see everything that went red? That's everything it found on that face. We don't want to do that. We don't want wires either because a wire, for instance, like this is a wire. So it's going to give you an entire enclosed profile. We don't want that either. We're only cutting the top edge. What we do want is an edge. So let's go ahead, add a contour now. And we got it right, or actually I was already in it. And I wanna go ahead and add a layer and I'm gonna call it start cut. You, you can name them anything you want, but that's the one I like to do. And what I'm going to do is I am going to make sure I've got select edges and I'm going to pick this edge right here. And then I'm going to make one contour on that edge. There you go. Now, that's that contour right there. Now, let's go ahead and look at the rear edge. Do the same thing. I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to call it in cut. And I just do this because it makes it a little bit easier for me to keep straight in my head what I'm doing. So I'm going to make one contour for an in cut right there. Notice it has arrows. It shows you which way it's going right there. Okay, so we're looking pretty good there. Now let's go ahead and add our, um, we've already got our cam markers layer here. We're going to go ahead and add our drilling, but I want to do the drilling three different ways. <laughs> and what it is is this part is 84 inches long. And I don't really want to wipe out seven feet of 12 inch channel. Uh, 
at whatever it costs, $30 a foot or something. I don't want to wipe that out. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of cheat. I'm going to turn off these layers here so I could better see the part. We're going to drill this hole and we're going to drill this hole. Then we're going to plasma cut this hole and this hole. And then the rest of the holes, we're just going to mark with the magic marker. And we're going to do the same thing on the end cut. That way, after I show you this in the next video of it being processed, then I'm going to be able to come along and cut this off right here and save the rest of that metal. So that's why I'm doing it. Let's go ahead and add the layers that we need to identify it as a drill layer. Now, all operations are placed on a layer. So if we're going to drill holes, those holes need to be on that drill layer. So let's go ahead. Once again, we're going to add edges and we are going to left click the top of the hole, the outside of the web. But now I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to select the second hole. Now I can go ahead, add a layer and I'm going to call this one drilled holes so that it's easy to remember. Now we're going to do that and we're going to say make contour and there you go. Now notice it added these little red dots. That's how it's going to know it's a hole. So when we assign a drill operation to it or a marking operation, um, it's going to be referencing off that hole data. All right, so we've got that hole. Now, we said that we want this one. We're going to left click on it and I'm going to hold down the control key, select that one. And this one, we are going to move to layer, a new layer, and we're going to call it plasma holes. Okay, this is going to allow me to, um, did I get both of them? Let me see if I got them both here. Um, huh. Okay, let's move to layer plasma holes. I'm trying to make sure I've got the right hole here. There's my drilled holes and my plasma holes. Let's see, edit layer. I'm not sure why I didn't get it on there. I'm going to try it again. Make two layers on cancel that i want to do it on my plasma holes make contour there you go well i don't know what i did wrong but i did something wrong because now they're being highlighted in cyan okay let's go ahead and take the rest of them i'm going to add a layer and this one i'm just going to call marked holes okay and let's go ahead and select edges I am going to hold down the control key so that I could select multiple items. And make nine contours on layer marked holes. So we do that. And now if we select that layer, there we go. They're all on the marked holes. All righty, let's turn on our cam marker layer. Yep, everything looks real good. We turn on everything. Now we have an end cut right here. Clearly, we don't want to cut this before we drill our holes, mark our engraving, stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I want to grab this, hold down the left mouse, and drag it to the end down here. That'll make it the last operation because the order of operations is shown, well, well it'll be shown down here, but you definitely want to do the end cut last. All right. We've got our layers, so we have a start layer. We have our drilled hole layer in cyan. We have our plasma holes, two of them. We have our marked holes, then we have our end cut, and then, we, of course, we have all of our engravings. Now that we've got our contours added, let's go ahead and assign operations to those contours. I'm going to come down here to the operations panel. I am going to click the plus button. The first operation we want to do is the start cut. So we'll go there. We got a plasma tool right here. We have to pick our shield. Oh, interesting. Notice right here it's given us a fine cut and a 45 amp shield. That's our only two choices, right? That's because if we look up here, Camelot, this Camelot version one, thinks that the part is 26 gauge thick. That's because that's the default. Um, remember, NC1 file doesn't have geometry and it just has a description so we will have to write routines later which we're doing in camelot 2 to automatically pick the thickness up but camelot 1 does not have that so the way to fix that is cancel go over here to edit material 
and pick your material. Mild steel is what we've got. And just from the drop down, pick the wall thickness. In this case, we'll pick three eighths of an inch. We'll say, okay. Now, when we go to add operations, notice it's three eighths of an inch up here. And our choices for consumables has changed to bigger consumables. Let's go ahead and pick a 65 amp shielded and we're gonna pick our start cut on this end. It's a plasma. We do not want coolant pump one enabled because that's the one that's gonna run coolant down through a tube, like round pipe or something like that. This isn't round, so it won't do us any good. So we turn that off. And I am gonna set the dwell time here to zero also. So let's go ahead and add that. And what that did, that gave us this operation right there. That's our start operation. So let's go ahead and add the other operations to it. Um, we go ahead and let's see, the direction of cut is going to be from this end, the start end, towards the chuck. So the next one to do would probably be the drilled holes, probably the way to go. So let's go here. Let's pick the drilled hole layer. We're going to pick the drill head. Now, when you do that, it gives you options here. Pump one enabled. Don't really need that because like I said, we're not actually doing a round like enclosed profile for the coolant to run down. Um, we are gonna enable pump two because that is the one specifically for drilling. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the coolant dwell time to five seconds. Um, I could have made it zero, I don't know, but we'll leave it at five because when the pump cranks up, the machine needs a little bit of time to pump the coolant up and get it flowing. Uh, we don't need tube stabilizer enabled. You could disable this or, or leave it enabled. It doesn't matter. I just disable it. All right, so we say, now we're not quite done here yet. I almost hit, okay. We have to tell it certain things up here. Now the return plane, if you're drilling a hole here and you are, you got what's called a rapid plane. So you're above the part up here, usually about an inch above it, right? Return plane is that plane that we're going to wrap it to where we're going to start our drilling at. That's going to be the return plane. So we're up here at our rapid plane. We're going to wrap it down to the return plane. In this case, we've got it two tenths of an inch above the part. Now, if you're working with metric, you could select here and go, you know, millimeters, whatever you want, but we're, we're on the inch right here. Depth of cut. We're going to go ahead and estimate it at, I'm going to put 0.5 inches because remember depth of cut is not at the point of the drill. It, well, the depth of cut is at the point of the drill, but we have to go further than the point of the drill because we got the taper of the cutting edges of the drill. So I'm going to go ahead and put half an inch. Feed rate, the way I'm going to do the feed rate is I've already done it, you can see. I want about a, I guess a 2,000 per flute chip load on the drill. We got two flutes in a drill. So we're looking for a chip load of two thou per drill, four thou total. The drill that's in the machine, it's a Hogan drill. They, ha they are limited to 450 RPM. That's why the drill can drill, you know, inch and 16th, inch and eighth holes. So we want to adjust the feed rate for four thousands per inch per revolution of the drill. So it's gonna be times 450 RPM, 1.8 inches per minute down feed. So let's go ahead and put our feed rate at 1.8 inches and say, okay. Now, if I click over here, we're drilling these two holes. Let's go ahead and add another operation. Pick our 65 amp shielded, turn off this coolant, this one here is going to be zero. We don't need any of this. And we are going to pick the plasma holes and we're going to cut it with a plasma tool. So we do all that and we say, okay. So now we've got our plasma cut holes. Let's go ahead and mark the other holes. Um, now we could do this one of two ways. In order to keep from running up and down the part, since I'm here, I could go ahead and do the engraving, which was, should start up here and head this way. And then we'll come back and we'll mark the holes or we just mark the holes straight down. And that way we have all the holes lumped together. And that's probably what I'm going to go ahead and do. So let's click plus. We're going to pick the marked holes. We're going to pick a marker and turn off the coolant pumps. And we'll say, okay. 
And that's it. So now we've got the marked holes. So start cut, drilled holes, plasma cut holes, marked holes. Remember, I'm not going to cut anything beyond this, this line right here because I, I want to save, you know, five, five and a half feet of metal. Um, all right. Next operation is we've got all our drilling and our marking done. We need to go ahead and do our end cut right over here. I'm sorry. <laughs> we got to do our cam markings. So let's go ahead at our operation. This time for the layer, we've got cam markers. We're going to pick our marker tool. Now we could pick the, uh, the scriber and permanently mark these in. But like I said, I don't want to do that. Um, if I was doing this for a job, I would pick the scriber and I would permanently mark the marks in. And that way you don't have to worry about anything getting rubbed off while they're handling the material. But I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to go ahead and select marker tool, turn off the pumps once again and say, okay. All right. So that's our operation. So that'll be the next operation. We have one more operation and that's, we want to cut the end off. However, we're not going to cut it off. We're going to mark it also, but it's going to be the end cut and we're going to mark it. Now I could put a comment right here. If I want, I could say, um, <clears throat> in cut marking or something like that. And that will show up in the G code at the machine if you want to do that. So there we go. So that is our contours. Um, we've assigned all of our contours. We're done with that. At this point, we could go ahead and nest this tube, create the G code, go out there and start cutting it. However, there is one other thing I would like to show you. If you look at the contours here for the in cuts, you could see right here, red means we're turning on the torch, red for hot. Green means we're turning it off. Now, if you notice, we are starting right at the edge of the material out here. Actually, we're a little bit off of it. Um, if I go like right here, you could see. So we don't really want a lead in to be, to be at that point right there, we would rather just blast and go and start cutting across. Now, another problem is if we do start cutting right here, you could see this is the torch up here. Let's just say that blue arrow is the torch. You're cutting through the entire flange, not just the web thing, it's the whole flange. So what happens when you do that, let's bring up a picture. This is what would happen. You would get this effect right here where the plasma stream wants to move around a little bit because it can't cut through two inch thick metal with that consumable. Now, one feature we've added to the program to eliminate this problem, um, I'll show you how to do it. However, if you want to do it this way, just, just trial and error, just see if you want to do it. But if you don't want to do it that way, then what we need to do is we need to shorten down the distance of where this thing starts cutting. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, the way we do that, we're going to go ahead and close out this tool here, and we're going to edit contours. Now, we have to do this after we create the operations. It won't let us do it until after operations. Now, up here, I could select by layer. So, for instance, I can come along and say, okay, the start cut right here and if i select select by layer it just selected that line that's fine you could also manually select them if you want to too for instance i could just come along and select it and i've got it there now what i want to do is i want to shorten up the length of cut where it's starting and ending by about three eighths of an inch so i'll go over here and i'll type in 0 0.375 three eighths of an inch. Now, if I wanted to do it in metric, I could just click this inch right here and switch over to 9.5 millimeters or whatever. However, um, I'm working in inches today. All right. So we get that and we say apply. Now watch right here, the little red mark and everything. Watch what happens. If I apply the offset, see them move in. It is now going to start cutting right about in that area right there. And since I've shortened, um, both ends, well, I don't actually see it stopping on the, the end end here. I'm not sure why it didn't stop on that end right there. Might have to check that out. But anyway, we're going to start cutting in early right here. Now, to do that, I don't want to lead in right here. So let's go to the start cut. I'm going to left click, right click, and then say edit. And I am going to take my lead in, and I'm going to move it to zero. 
my lead out, I'm also going to move it to zero because I don't want it to roll around that flange or have any other issue. Overcut, you can put it to zero, it doesn't matter. Overcut's not even used in this particular case right here. So if I do all that and I say, okay, now if we select start cut, you could see where it's a much, much shorter uh, a path that it's going to be taken. All right, so we've got that. Now the end cut, let's go down here to this one right here. We got our start cut there. Here's our end cut. We're going to edit it and do the same thing. Let's go ahead and, oh, that's right. I don't have to do anything. I'm marking it. But let's go ahead and move it in. I am going to edit it. And nope, I don't want to do that. I'm sorry. I want to edit the contour. So I'm going to select the in cut here, select by layer, and I'm going to shorten it up a little bit too. Now it's going to mark it, but if the plasma was selected, it would have cut it. Let's apply the offset. And there you go. You can kind of see what's happened. See how this one is moved in. See that it's moved in from the end. Now, Camelot version one, especially NC1, is still a work in progress, and I'm a little concerned why it didn't shorten this one down here. And what I'm going to try to do is redo that. So this time I want to select by layer. I'm going to select start cut, select by layer, and let's see what happens. Okay, it looks like to me we've got a little bit of an issue we got to check out. I don't see it shortening this end here. Um, so evidently we got a slight little bug, an error somewhere. I don't know why it did it on the back. It wouldn't do it on the front. Um, not a real big deal though. It's, it's not going to matter. Anyway, we will fix that. All right. So we've done our, our contours. The next thing we need to do now is actually nest this, this part right here. If you look up here on the top, you'll see a nestings panel. I am going to select, uh, nest tubes that automatically close the other tube, the other um, tool. And right here, it's asking us for things like space at the end, things like that. You don't usually need to fix it. Now, what's happening here, I can't really see all of um, the nest tube deal. Oh yeah, I do, right here. All right, yeah, oh, we're good, okay, I'm sorry. Um, I, thought I, I thought I was missing it. By the way, if you grab with the left mouse one of these here, and you drag it, it'll allow you to put it in different places. You could do that for all of the windows. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it that I have a raw length piece of material out there, a hundred inches long, just, you know, something. And then I am going to go ahead and hit nest tube. And there it is. So if we zoom out, there you go. Yeah, it didn't shorten it up right here. And I've been thinking about that. And I think it has to do with, if you notice this end over here, no, they both got angles on it. I, I have no idea. We, we will fix that problem because I don't know what it is. Anyway, there you go. <clears throat> so that's our nesting right there. All we have to do now is run the post processor. And we're going to put this in, well, let's just call it S. S2.ngc, that's the um, extension that Camelot is going to put on the end of the our NC code. So when you see .nc, pretty much we're going to be looking at a NC1 file, DSTV file. If you see ngc, you're looking at the output of Camelot, which is going to be going into the machine out there. So we'll say save. And there we go. This is our, this is our code right here. All we've got to do now is take this, put it on a USB, and head on out to the machine. Now, if you want a quick shortcut, it'll save this into the file that you're working on. But if I go over here, I learned a shortcut. If I go here and I just say save G code, I can go ahead, pop my USB into my deal, and then just drag and drop over to my USB, and then just off I go. Anyway, that's it for this video. Um, like I said, I mentioned Camelot 2 a lot in this video, and that's because, you know, we're, we're hoping to bring it out in the fourth quarter of this year, <clears throat> and a, a tremendous amount is going to change all for the good. It's, it's all free update, so you don't have to worry about it. But what I will be doing is everybody who already has the XR12s or XR6s or, or RC6s, 
I will be putting you on the beta program. So as soon as I've got it to where I'm happy with it, doing the angle iron and the C channel, because that's our first deep dive into Camelot 2 is the stair issue of it, <clears throat> then I will be sending you out um, this software and you could help me, you know, look for bugs. Anyway, the next video we're going to go do is we're going to take this file and we're going to actually make this part at the machine. So hope to see you tuning in for that one. Anyway, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you. Hope you have a great day. Goodbye.